It's crap, but it's mine. Scottish wedding, best wedding I've ever been to. I hope there's Christmas markets this year, because once you see a surgery, you're like, we're all meat. Um, so I can share with you that my job. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I am Yvette, and I moved to the UK two years ago. Um, so first things first, as you can see, we're at my new place, new background. It is no longer red, so my sanity is slightly better from like the aggressive color that was this house. Um, so I have been painting and renovating this house. Um, so now we have at least one wall that I can now film in front of. So it has been a bit of a break in filming because I'm covered in paint from here down. So one of the reasons I was very excited about this house was that we had a fireplace and a mantle. I'm gonna decorate this at Christmas so much because I've never had a fireplace, never had a mantle. So I'm very excited about that. So I thought it was only right to one, film in front of it, and two, put a portrait of my dog on the top because I'm a crazy dog lady. So uh, you can see Bambi in her glory because I'm a crazy dog lady. So, and then my bookshelf because you know, well, bookshelf, because my bookshelf because you know I love books. Um, so it seemed like the best place. Now, this video is a really exciting video because I have officially been living in the UK for two whole years. Um, admittedly, 55% of that time has been in a lockdown or some level of restriction. So it's not like a normal uh, <laughs> two year anniversary video, but I thought it'd be nice to do a quick little summary, some exciting, uh, some of my favorite highlights of the last like two years. And also I'm gonna reveal to you what my job is. Cause I've alluded to you guys so much what my job is um, and I've quit so I can now tell you. <laughs> so I've quit my job. Um, and I'll reveal that to you in a minute, as well as some just general changes to scheduling, which is very exciting. So hopefully you'll be seeing more of me. Um, but yes, we'll kick it off. Lots of announcements, lots of reminiscing, lots of exciting things. Two years. That's how long my original visa was for. <laughs> so I have renewed my visa. I am on a spouse visa, so it's not really an expiry, but the government does tend to, you know, charge me to be here. <laughs> I always felt like um, being in a Commonwealth country, I should have some sort of like fast track or discount or something, but no, no benefits. <laughs> so some of the highlights of my two years is that number one goes without saying, I bought a house. I bought this house. I bought this mantle. I put a picture of my dog on it. It's mine. It's crap, but it's mine. <laughs> it's my crap, um, which is very exciting. So that was super exciting because one, we lived in that tiny flat for so long <laughs> um, and now we have space. It's still only like two bedrooms, but having like a living room, a dining area and a kitchen and a garden makes a world of difference. I'm sure there's some flats in London that are still bigger than my house, but it doesn't matter. I'm happy um, and it's given me a project. So um, being stuck in a rental during the lockdown, you get quite bored. <laughs> Um, cause you run out of things to do. There's only so many puzzles and so much clay and so much paint by numbers you can do before you go insane or b books to read. Um, so super happy to have a project. Maybe we bit off more than we could chew, but um, fortunately I have been documenting the renovation. You would have seen my last video, um, not my last video, a few videos ago. Um, I posted um, the walkthrough of the like before. So what I was going to do is I'm gonna do basically a vlog a week of documenting the changes because we've got to put in all new bathrooms, all new kitchen, all new um, garden, obviously painting, fixing a lot of the holes. Daniel's been building a lot of cabinets, closets. Then also I have no furniture. So there's also decorating that goes into it. Um, and all of that takes a lot of time because we're mostly doing it ourselves. Um, we're getting uh, people into the bathrooms because the risk versus benefit is not worth um, us doing that. <laughs> but like the kitchen and the painting and the renovating and everything else is us. So I'm gonna put up a video a week. Um, I've got one to go up of, of the move, which you may have already seen. Um, and then I'll do a summary or a catch up of week by week so you can see the changes in the house as we go along. Cause I think it'd be a cool project for you to follow along with. Cause I love renovation videos. I am on TikTok and it keeps recommending renovation talk to me. So um, yes, recommend that. I've gotten to see a lot of the UK. Now, I would normally say I got to travel so much, which I did in theory in the first year. And then obviously the pan the pan panini happened. So we didn't travel, obviously. 
as much. So we didn't manage, fortunately, to like Croatia and any of the green list countries when they were such thing as that. Um, but obviously like at least six months to eight months of the last year have been, you know, uno travel. Uno, that's one. Zero? No travel. So um, benefit of that is I've managed to explore a lot of the UK, which I always wanted to do. Um, so, you know, silver lining. I didn't think I'd have the time because I would have been abroad. I had the time suddenly. So um, I have done the Lakes District, which is probably my favorite place in the UK, other than like where I live obviously for living, but like for visiting and like weekend hikes and adventures, the Lakes District is incredibly underrated. And I know it's quite highly rated, but it's still underrated. Um, I feel like no one knows about the lakes really, unless you're from the UK or at least Europe. I can promise you no one in Australia is like the Lakes District. <laughs> um, so, so lovely. The landscape's beautiful. I think it's basically like the Cotswolds, but like gray, cause I'm sure it's a different type of stone. Um, fantastic, lovely cottages, loves it. Green, beautiful. Could be warmer, but we'll let it go. <laughs> also been to Cornwall, which was beautiful. Seeing the beaches, they didn't look like, did not look like I was in the UK. Looked like I was somewhere in Spain. Um, Cornish pasties, saw some Cornish pixies, got it all. Loved Cornwall. Cotswolds, probably second favorite after the lakes, um, basically because it's the same vibe. But the lakes have the mountains. Um, I loved the little cottages. Everything felt like I was in a storybook or the thatched roofs, the little cafes. I went during, oh, I hope there's Christmas markets this year. I really wanna to go to the Bath Christmas markets. Uh, I've been trying to go, I was gonna go the first year and I didn't for whatever reason and oh, I've never regretted anything more. <laughs> Everything's closed. There's no more fun because of the insurance. I hope they sort that out. Mm, can't take it anymore. I need a Christmas market. That's like the number one benefit. In fact, that's the one of the only benefits of being in a cold country at Christmas time is the Christmas atmosphere and markets. If you take that out, it's just winter. <laughs> I may as well be in Australia <laughs> if you're not gonna make it Christmassy. Wales. I have been to Wales. It was before many of you joined me, but I have a video. I'll see if I can link it. If not, there's a playlist of my adventures in Wales. I did a road trip. Um, like the first month we got to the UK, I went to Wales because that was like up on my bucket list. Um, there, honestly, I had all their food. The downside is there was quite a lot of rain when I went, so I do want to go back. And when I climbed Snowdonia, there was literally no view. For I don't know why, it was just a low cloud that day. So I like climbed to the top and as close as the camera is to me now, could not see a thing. So <laughs> have to revisit, but I will say the Welsh people are the nicest people in the world and I love them. And it's my favorite UK accent, I think. I love it so much. I wish I could do it. We've all seen how I go at accents. I won't, I won't offend you. Also done Scotland. I know that's quite a big like area <laughs> to be like, I've done a country. I couldn't pick one to highlight because I've done uh, I've done the Highlands. I did a road trip around the Highlands. I've done Glasgow and I've done Edinburgh and it's all fantastic. I love Scots in general. Um, my sister-in-law lives in Scotland. Um, it's, I love that she gives me an excuse to go up so often. Obviously not recently because of the stupid border, but um, <laughs> went to her wedding, Scottish wedding, best wedding I've ever been to. And so the landscape's beautiful. The people are lovely. They're bants, 10 out of 10. Um, I love Edinburgh. Edinburgh is like my favorite Scottish city, but like you're in Scotland, you can't go wrong. Love Scots. And then most recently, most recently, last weekend, I went down to New Forest. So I hadn't been there before. Um, it was the May long weekend. Um, I didn't vlog it because I didn't really think there'd be much. It's just a lot of me walking, but it is super lovely if you're ever going down there. It's like horses everywhere. It's like if you're going to Somerset and you're seeing every sheep, but they're horses. It's amazing. And then there's like deer and there was donkeys. It was just a really chill weekend. We stayed in a nice cottage, beautiful area of the world really enjoy it. I also got to go to the theatre once again, not that much because of the last year, but overall we've been to a lot of theatre, which is amazing because theatre is not that big in the in Australia. So um, highlights from the last year was I managed to go see Dragatha Christie, which is Agatha Christie with drag queens, which is very funny. And I loved it. I managed to go for my birthday in that like one week where things were actually fun in December. I managed to go. I was very excited about it. 
And then also um, I managed to go to Dear Evan Hansen like the week before everything shut down. So <laughs> I've been quite fortunate to get that, but I'm very keen for them to open up again and, and go. The first thing that was canceled for me for the lockdown last year was um, Hamilton. I was supposed to go to Hamilton on the 24th of March uh, and that was I think the 23rd of March was when we went into a lockdown. So for me, my like white whale is to see Hamilton because I feel like then I've like, we're past the pandemic, Hamilton's back on. We're back to where we were at least, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like my mark in the sand. I did have tickets for May and they got canceled for the fourth time. I will keep trying. <laughs> I'm gonna always keep trying. Anytime they let me buy a ticket, I will buy a ticket. Um, they just keep getting refunded. I'm not losing money, FYI. Um, and then that got cancelled. So now my new ticket is for August. So that is the new line in the sand. Fingers crossed. It's gonna happen. <laughs> Only 18 months later. Now, it goes without saying, I can't do a two year summary if I don't talk about the panini, the pantalone, <laughs> pantomime. <laughs> yes, look, has some of it been a bit craft because of the lockdown and everything? Yes. I don't know though, however, like, I, I feel like it was gonna suck wherever you are. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even like, so I know often in the media, Australia and New Zealand get held it, heralded as like these like beacons of like joy and hopefulness, but they go into lockdowns overnight. Like they don't have it either. They still can't travel. It's like a gilded cage and things get closed overnight for one single case. And now they're getting vaccine passports just to go into restaurants. So even though there's no cases. So like the grass isn't always greener, you know? I was able to do a vaccinated course, become a volunteer vaccinator, uh, which allowed me to be vaccinated as well as vaccinate others. Um, that was good because I just learned, you had to do a course and I learned a lot about vaccines, how they work, virology, everything, very educational, uh, which also helped when I did my diploma of medical science, they all kind of played together, which was accidental, but I love it. <laughs> um, you know, I say Australia's got this and not the grass always greener. I don't think that it'd be, I don't, there's nowhere else I'd rather have been in the pandemic. Um, because yes, I'm not saying in any way, shape or form that the government was perfect. Absolutely not. Um, I think a lot of the time, you know, it can always be improved upon. What I will say is the vaccine rollout has been flawless. That's why I would not rather be anywhere else. Uh, the vaccine rollout in Australia and New Zealand is not great. So they don't have a lot of the freedoms. Um, that we do, we basically like us in like tier three is Australia all the time. You know, I'd rather have a bit of a crap time early, but get out of it faster, which is what I think is going to happen. Um, Cause the NHS, oh my gosh, I work in healthcare, which I'm going to reveal in a moment. Um, so I see it from both sides. I've seen Australia's healthcare. I've seen the UK healthcare. I've also worked in the US healthcare because my role was global and nothing ever will compare to the perfect pedestal that I put <laughs> NHS on. Um, the NHS is a gleaming beacon of what everyone should look to for a healthcare system. Um, obviously give it money, always needs more funding, blah, blah, blah. But like, oh my God, I know wait times aren't great, but wait times, I'll like, it's fine. <laughs> like I'll wait, it's fantastic. As long as you're not urgent, I get it. Um, for example, just so you know, like what wait times in other countries are like. I can't remember if I've told this. The day I left for, the UK, it was Mother's Day, um, the day after I left on a Monday. Um, so my Sunday, my last full day was Mother's Day. My mum had a kidney stone that morning on our last day together. It was sucky, sucked. So I didn't have a proper goodbye. I didn't get a good proper final day. Um, I spent my day in the hospital in the emergency room with her um, and she didn't get a bed for seven hours, uh, even though she was like writhing around in pain with a kidney stone. And then she had to stay in for two days because they couldn't fit her in to get a stent just to get her that. And then and then she ended up going on private health insurance to get the actual surgery to fix it like weeks later. So I know there's a wait list in the NHS and I'm sure you all going to comments tell me like your struggles and I validate that it's not perfect and things happen. But from what I've seen of like what would be heralded as like a good healthcare system, the I've, I personally have never had to wait for the NHS. Daniel went in what did he do? He ran and he jumped on a seat, even though I told him not to jump on the, on the chair because it was wet and he cut his leg quite bad and it wouldn't stop bleeding. And he went to the, uh, in the emergency room A&E twice in like the same day to get it stitched up because they couldn't stitch it and the stitches weren't working. So he went back and he saw them both times within like 20 minutes. 
And like, I compared that to my mum who had a kidney stone and couldn't get a bed for seven hours. Um, and so I know the one thing I will complain about with the NHS um, is that trying to get an appointment with your doctor is a sport. Oh, like I just, I'm like, I just rather die on the floor than try and get on the phone again to this receptionist. I cannot. It's like, is it urgent? I don't know. Yes, I guess it's not chronic, but I'm not dying. Like, but I need to see a doctor. I hope a lot of the elective surgery will start to go up again soon because I know it's been delayed quite heavily because of COVID. So probably a lot of people out there watching would have something on hold right now as I'm like, it's the best, which I understand. Which leads me into my job. <laughs> so um, I told you guys, I promised that when I quit my job, I would share with you what it was um, because I didn't want to make it known when I was there just for like, you know, HR issues. Um, so I can share with you that my job <laughs> was like key client manager, which means nothing. But I worked at a company that um, I worked in virtual augmented reality for surgery. I told you it was cool. So basically I ran curated uh, surgical training um, events, courses, live surgeries uh, all over the world for trainees uh, using augmented reality. Cool, right? So I've quit. Um, I've changed in jobs to a new job um, in the interim, so I'm no longer there. Um, it was fantastic, loved it. Team was great, no complaints. Um, the hours were crazy though, because it was, you know, a lot of the work was international. This is where I worked with the US. Um, I had to work nights, most weekends. It was very grueling, which is why I haven't been able to commit the time I wanted to this. Also, wasn't doing anything exciting other than that, which I couldn't talk about. <laughs> so now that I've left that role, I've got a new job, which I'm expecting to have a little more time to myself, aka at least nights and weekends. Um, I should be able to commit to this how I was before I started at that job, because I like making videos. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, I will be going back to three days a week of videos. Um, I say this now, I haven't done it, but I'm gonna get into more of a routine because I have more of a consistent schedule. Things are opening up. Hopefully I'll have some stories to tell. We will see, um, but yes. So yeah, augmented reality surgery. So you do surgery with augmented reality. Who'd have thought? Told you I worked in the medical industry. I know it in and out. I've seen so much stuff. Can't go, then this is why I'm vegan. Because once you see a surgery, you're like, we're all meat. <laughs> I'm joking. I was vegan before. Um, that's all I have for you today. I thought I'd give you, look, I've given you some highlights. I've given you some reveals, some shocks, who knows? Um, and a new schedule. Um, and I've got some exciting things in the pipeline for this channel um, that hopefully I can execute soon. And as well as renovation videos. So there's lots happening. So hopefully you stick around uh, for year three. Also, find it only three more years till I can get citizenship, which I actually think is five. Yeah, three years until I can get indefinite leave to remain. So. I can document that if that's interesting. Doubt it is though. Because when is ever government office interesting? If you enjoy this, give me a thumbs up. Remember to hit subscribe so you can see all of the great stuff that's coming up. Um, and tell me in the comments below your favorite travel destination in the UK. Because let's face it, we're all probably doing staycations this year. We'll be lucky to get to one place. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching.